Shamir, I think you can improve your volley if you change a few things. And one thing I did not like on your volley was the fact that you were coming through with the tip of the racket on your finish. And this was causing a lot of balls to go long. Do you think that's a problem on your volley? Yeah, Usually? my ball is long every time. It goes long. It's from this. It's, there's a little bit of a pushing on the ball, and then there's a finish where the wrist might be involved as well. And the tip of the racket going this way is an indicator that this is taking place. Yeah. On the back end, it's even wilder. Your racket goes way uh, uh, forward like this, and it goes across this way. So And basically what I want you to do is imagine a wall in front of you when you're volleying. And basically you're going to come into the ball and then freeze it right at contact. And you can also squeeze the racket uh, to make the racket head even more stable. And on the back end you do the same thing. You come into the ball and you imagine there's a wall in front of you and you just freeze the racket and maybe tighten the grip a little bit. And if you do that, your volleys are not only going to have more control, but they're also going to have more power. So the main thing you're saying, um it's at contact, that's when the racket stops. You don't keep going after that. You try not to. You try not to. Okay. So if I make contact you, here, I yeah. stop there. You stop there. Now okay. sometimes the, the racket might continue a little bit. It's kind of hard to stop it. The momentum will carry you usually across the body, interestingly. Okay. But your intention has to be to stop the racket right at the moment of contact. This is not only going to give you control, but it's also going to give you more power. Like the ball is going to pop off the strings like much a, faster if like you do that. Uh, it's kind of like a trampoline. The ball will deflect off the racket and you will actually uh, get more power. If you continue going uh, through the ball and push on it, you actually get less power that way. Okay. And you will feel this instantly. So go over there, I'm going to feed you some. Okay. Freeze it at contact. Go again. Okay, good. Freeze it. Okay, now in addition to freezing, I want you also to tighten the, the grip a little bit. Tighten the grip pressure. So as you make contact, you also squeeze a little more. You squeeze on the grip. Come on, squeeze it. Good, again. Squeeze it. Oh yeah, you feel that one? Yeah, that one felt good, Did it yeah. pop more? Yeah. Again. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Another one. Much better, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so this will work when there's a lot of pace coming your way. So you basically are going to come to the ball, you're going to tighten the grip, you're going to freeze the racket, and the ball is just going to pop off the strings really fast. Okay. You felt that, right? Yeah, immediately. Okay, but now what if the ball doesn't have any power? What do you do then? You have to create the power from somewhere because you can't deflect the ball with power that doesn't have any power to begin with. Yeah. So this is where you need to take a backswing, okay? Okay. All right, so there is a backswing on the volley, and it's not really a backswing where you're taking your arm back like you do on a forehand, and the hand goes back. It's not like that. The hand stays in front, but the racket lags behind like this. So the hand stays in front of you, the racket tip lags behind, and then you come into the ball this way and you freeze it like that. So this little action from here to here will help you get power on balls that do not have so much pace. Okay. Lag and pop. Good. Come on. Lag and pop. Can you feel it? Yeah, that feels come good. Come again. Lag and pop. Nice. And one more. Lag and pop. Come on. Lag and pop it. And one more. Lag and pop. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that, that was good. beautiful. All right, now look, same as the forehand, if the ball doesn't have any pace, we got to take a little bit of a lag on the back end. Okay. So you see, you don't take the, the hand all the way back like this, like you would on a, on a slice back end, but simply, you know, I'm hitting this way. Look, watch, I'm going to turn and I'm going to lag the racket behind. See, my hand really doesn't go back, but my tip of the racket is lagged behind my hand. And now when I come in, I'm going to freeze it at contact like this. So this little uh, space from here to the contact is going to give me the required power that I need on balls that do not have any pace. Wow! How good was that? Yeah, it felt good. One more. Even better. Okay, what you have to remember is that if the ball is coming with a lot of pace, is you don't really have to move forward on the ball, you don't have to step into it. You basically need a strong foundation, so you want to have a wide base. And you want to be in a proper ready position, basically with your upper body slightly down and you don't really need a big knee bend. The most important thing is that the elbows are free. Because what happens to a lot of players when they get a fastball coming at them and the torso is kind of straight, they tuck the elbow and then move out of the way. 
Have you ever seen this? That's me. And now all of a sudden they're making contact too far back. So to prevent that, get down with the upper body slightly. Okay. You need a slight knee bend, get on the balls of your feet and keep the elbows in front. And then when that hard ball comes, you basically just think about deflecting it. Now let me feed you some really hard ones and you try to do just that, okay? Okay. Hold your ground. Good. Better. Freeze. When you get a ball that's a floater, let's say like a little dink shot or like a slice or like a little spinny ball, you got to close on it. So you got to transition through the volley. And the most common mistake on these type of volleys is when players take a step and they freeze this step. Now they're probably not going to be close enough to the ball because those type of balls have a tendency to die and lose penetration very quickly and then end up reaching for the ball. And that sudden stop also causes players to lose balance as they execute a shot like that. So what you must do when you're transitioning through volleys like this on balls that are coming with no penetration, you must take at least one or two steps after making contact. So you're gonna come in like this, contact, one, two, and then you come back. Just picture Nadal, he's probably the best closer in the world when it comes to closing off volleys. And he always takes two steps after making contact. He comes in, he hits, and then continues going one, two, and then he positions himself for the next shot, which he usually doesn't have to because he puts those away for winners most of the time. So you wanna try it out? Yeah. One thing you gotta remember is that you gotta be very explosive when you recognize a ball like that. So you gotta be fast on the ball, otherwise it's gonna to drop too low on you, okay? Explosive, come, come, come. You're moving forward. Come again, and then lag. You're stopping too much. You come in here, you're stopping. You see how you're reaching? Continue moving after contact, watch. You're running, contact, one, two. So you can maintain your balance so you don't lose the stroke that way. Oh, so I go. Contact one two. There you go. Contact one two. I'm not doing the. That's a disaster. That's gonna cause you to miss. Cause the ball is gonna end up being too far away. You're gonna reach. Contact one two. All right, here we go. Ready? Perfect. Okay. Now you're looking a little bit more like Rafa. Come on, get in there. You see that? Doesn't that feel a hundred times better? Yeah, more control. Do it again. Lag the racket behind a little more. Come on. Good. Look at that. That's beautiful. All right, ready? Come. One, two, good job. One more time. Again, come on, close, close, close. So good. Make sense? Yeah, well, what well, made it made sense was when you said contact one, two, no, no, stomping. That's what I was doing. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, That's do not that. gonna work out. You know what is funny? Here's the funny thing about volleys, is that when you are being fed to, or you're doing stationary position volleys, you can get away with a lot of poor technique. And you can get away with stepping in and going like that. You can even get away with, you can hit a ball with your handle like this and put it away for a winner. Yeah. But as soon as you start playing a match, whether it be singles or doubles, and now you probably have to hit a volley in transition. You probably have to place the volley and hit it correctly or you're gonna get passed. And you have to hit it of balls that are coming with different spins, different heights, different paces. And now the poor technique uh, doesn't work anymore. You will not be able to get away with so many mistakes. So in a case of match play, this is how you have to handle a low ball. If you play a match and you try to step in and then freeze that step, this is the number one cause uh, of volley mistakes that are made in transition at the recreational level. And you don't see this too much at the pro level. You see it sometimes. Sometimes. But if you want to watch the best closer in the business. Uh, you got the, the Brian brothers in doubles, they do this too. And Nadal in singles, they will always continue moving after making contact and transition. Contact one, two. Contact one, two. You wanna okay. try backhands? Yeah, that's All right. right. Come. Oh yeah, I like it. Again, come on. Good job. Another one, come. Close. So good. Match point, last one, close. Yeah, I got it. Shamir, what do you think? Do you feel like your volley has gotten a little bit better? Yeah, the main thing I was able to control more the volley because uh, I'm stopping at contact. Right. And I'm able to differentiate between is this a ball with pace or not with pace and different way to approach it. That's, that's key. If you take a look at the ball, you determine how it's coming and then you're either going to hold your ground, be in a good foundation and just deflect the ball back or you're going to close on it. And when you do so, you can actually lag the racket behind a little bit. But the thing that worked the best today, I felt, was the squeeze and freeze technique. 
When you started doing that, your volleys cleaned up almost instantly.